What's going on guys, Aaron from Top Tier Gaming here, and I am coming at you with a super awesome dueling book game between myself on Marincess and my opponent on the Libromancer deck, which is a super awesome deck. I've been playing it, you know, every so often on dueling book, and I think the deck actually is really cool, and there's a lot of awesome stuff that happens in this game, and I'm super excited to commentate over it. That being said, I do want to let you guys know before we hop into this game, Discord link down below along with all of our other social media links if you want to follow the channel more closely. Also, I am trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, a small little goal I've made. So if you do enjoy the Yu-Gi-Oh! content, you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps me out in what I do here on the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this Dueling Book game. So we have myself at 819 rating at the time of recording. It's been, I think, five or so days since this game, maybe six. I think I'm much closer to 1,000 rating now, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and our opponent's at 813 rating, so decently high rated game. Um, and yeah, as of recording this, it will be going up on Friday, which means tomorrow will actually be the start of our TCG Nationals here, and that's super exciting. I'm hoping to see Marincess do super well. I wouldn't actually be surprised to see either of these decks do super well. Uh, so it's going to be a really fun Saturday, but we do lose the die roll, and we are going second. Opening hands, we have Silent Sea Nettle, Nibiru, Pascalus, Dive, and Sleepy Maiden. Uh, so yeah, this hand's pretty good. It has one go second card, so that's like okay. It's got a lot of gas, so it's a much better go first hand, but it's still definitely good. Our opponent opens Libromancer Agent, Geek Boy, Zeomin, Doom Broker, and First Appearance. So that is a lot of Libromancer cards, but then, you know, opening a Ritual plus Libromancers is very good, and then he has a Zeomin. Another thing to note is that I've been through so many different builds of Marincess recently that this one was on Nettle. I've gone back and forth between Abyss Shark, but this list... From five days ago was on Sea Nettle, so that'll be interesting to go think going forward. Uh, I'm still not sure which version's better, like there's so much testing with it, but starting off, our opponent is going to activate first appearance. He's going to go ahead and search a Libromancer Fire from his deck to hand, which is just another extender. He's going to normal summon the Zeomin, activate the effect, and that is good. Uh, he's going to add Deer Note to hand, which is interesting. Wouldn't you just normally add the... Uh, oh, okay, he said misclick. That makes sense. Again, it's been like five days since this happened, so yeah, you definitely want to add Foxy Tune there. Uh, it doesn't make sense to add Deer Note. So he's going to activate the Foxy Tune. Going to go ahead and pitch the Geek Boy. Too special the Deer Note, and we have no ways to stop this, so he's going to go straight for Papega Ruler. Going to go ahead and use Deer Note 2 on Zeomin. Special back Zeomin, and then Mill 5. So we look at our opponent's Mills, and he Mills. Fateful, Wright, and Griffin, which is not, not good at all. Rocks, Rose, and Ash. So overall, a, a pretty subpar mill, to say the least. But he does get a Rocks, Rose to hand, uh, which could come up. It, 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 I mean, it's it's a monster. It's not even something you really want to add. Like, overall, that was just a terrible Chaos Ruler. However, it is going to allow our opponent to go straight into, you know, his one card. Needle Fiber, essentially. And he's going to go and Special Summon the Red Rose from the deck. And from here, he's going to reveal the Doom Broker and special out the Fire. Fire's effect is going to go ahead and add another Geek Boy, I believe. Yep, there is the Geek Boy. At this point, I can nib at any point, but I didn't really feel like he was going to make me nib there. Something going into this game is I have very little testing against this deck at this point when recording. And knowing where to nib this deck was super hard for me. And I think if I have any misplays this game, it is deciding when to Nibiru uh, Libromancer. Because I had really no idea what it was going for. And honestly, maybe before he summoned Shooting Riser would have been good. Like, he could still Special Agent, he could still Special Geek Boy. But stopping Shooting Riser means I'm also stopping Red Rose and Snow. Uh, which would have been amazing, because Snow hurts Marincess pretty hard, and everyone knows it. Uh, Red Rose Effect is going to summon Rocks Rose, and then he's going to dump the Snow. Uh, Rocks Rose Effect, add Basil Rose Shoot. So we could have stopped all of this if we nibbed earlier. Uh, then he's going to Special Geek Boy, activate the effect, and add another first appearance more than likely. Yep. And then I believe this is where I decide to Nibiru. Yeah, I'm thinking there. Um, and yeah, this is where I'm going to Nibiru. And the reason I'm going to Nibiru here is for some reason... Like, looking at this board, I suddenly got really scared of Opelousa. Like, I don't even know if they run Opelousa. I'm sure they do. Uh, but, like, looking at this Rocks Rose, this Geek Boy, and this Hauk, I was like, that's a 3 negate Opelousa. And my first thought was to nib here. He could have, you know, made an Opelousa before, too. I just didn't think 
he was going to, but suddenly I was like really afraid of Opelousa randomly, so I decided here's where I want to nib. I do think nibbing maybe before the shooting riser might have been best, um, but at least I also got one extender out additionally in the Geek Boy because I knew he had that in hand, so that's another thing. We're going to go ahead and Nibiru, which I, mean, I think the Nibiru still definitely did something, I just don't think it was the best Nibiru. Our opponent's going to activate Agent, revealing the Doom Broker, of course. Uh, special Summon, Activate Effect. I'm going to go ahead and add the Geek Boy. And then he's going to activate First Appearance to Ritual Summon. Doom Broker Effect, go ahead and set a Trap from deck. And he's going to set the Intervention, which is a really good card. It's like follow-up and it's a, a, a negate, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it negates the any, any card or effect. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, he's going to go ahead and set the Basil Rose Shoot and pass. So we draw Imperm for turn, which would have been nice on our last turn, and it's not really usable because of Nib, but this is a very easy board to break, so I'm pretty confident we'll be able to set this and have it be an interrupt for next turn. Uh, I go straight into battle phase, and I attempt to run over his Ritual, and this is, of course, because I know he has Snow, and this would stop his trap from being live, so I'm pretty sure this is going to bait Snow. Um... I don't know if this was the best point, but I felt like he was going to easily be able to stop my play if I didn't do this. Like, we have Pascalus to play around Snow, but if he knows that Marincis is really weak on Normal Summon, I can go Pascalus, he can just negate it with the trap, and then at resolution, Snow my face down, and my turn is over. And that's sort of why I went Battle Phase first. Main Phase 2, I'm going to Pascalus, and he is going to say that's good, which I agree with. Uh, I'm going to special the Sleepy Maiden with Pascalus effect. And then I'm going to link off into Sea Angel. I have no way to chain block it, so I can just go for it sort of whenever. Uh, he is going to Intervention the Sea Angel, which everyone loves to stop Sea Angel. So you usually know something's going to happen there. Uh, he's going to bounce back and special the Agent. And Agent Effect is going to add back the Geek Boy, I believe he added. I actually just missed it, but I'm pretty sure it was the Geek Boy. I'm going to link off the Maiden and the Sea Angel for Anemone. Going to go ahead and Anemone Effect to bring back the Pascalus, presumably. Or I'm thinking here, what are my options? I mean, there's Maiden, Pascalus. I mean, I think Pascalus is always just the correct thing to bring back, bring back here. Um, and then I'm going to link that off for the Slug. Slug, probably add back Maiden, I want to say. Yeah, add back Maiden. And then from here, we can link off into the um, Coral Triangle. Triangle effect can pitch Maiden. Uh, of course, Anemone is going to add back the Pascalus, my bad. Which is kind of tough. I don't think... Okay, in this situation... Wow, I kind of... Didn't I just kind of screw myself doing that? I, I think you don't normally want to do that. I think you want to not add back Pascalus here with Anemone. And I'll see if that comes back to bite me. So we're going to have to pitch the Pascalus. Oh, actually, my apologies. I'm just forgetting. I didn't actually special Sleepy Maiden with her own effect. I special Sleepy Maiden with the effect of Pascalus. So... We will be able to special summon her, which is very nice. So we're going to search the trap with Coral Triangle, special the Sleepy Maiden targeting Coral Triangle, and we're going to make uh, Argonaut. And then we can use the effect of Sleepy Maiden to equip Anemone back to our Argonaut, which is very good. Our opponent's going to chain Basil Rose Shoot, which fair enough, they don't want it to get negated on their turn with Argonaut, so that's fair. Uh, then I'm going to dive out the Pascalus, and I'm going to special summon Sea Nettle from hand. And I'm curious whether I go Kragen or Bahamut Shark here. Looks like Kragen. Yeah, I'm going to go Kragen to try and clear this board a little bit. Uh, definitely that Nib Token is huge. And Kragen versus Nib Token is so good because Kragen burns for the uh, attack on field. So I believe, yeah, the Nibir Token is 6k. So he's going to take 3,000 burn damage from Kragen, which is insane. Our opponent draws right. That is a good draw. Uh, well, it's kind of a good draw, not really, because his Chaos Ruler mills were so bad, they're banished now, he, he milled the Fateful and the Griffin. Uh, so Wright's just a level 4 extender, essentially. Our opponent is going to activate Geek Boy to special, which at this point, our opponent has so many, like, just fodder monsters here that he can make plays with. Uh, however, we do have Wave plus Imperm plus Argonaut Negate plus Kragen. We are in a very good spot here with four interrupts, and it's going to be almost impossible for my opponent to kill me through Marincess Wave. Uh, going to go ahead and activate Fire. He's just swarming the field right here. Uh, Fire is going to go ahead and probably add another Liberal Mansion monster. Actually, does he have a target left? Yeah, okay, no targets, which I'm guessing he only plays two Geek Boy. 
Yeah, he only plays two Geek Boy in his deck, which is fair enough. I think I've seen that most of the time. I'm gonna go ahead and Synchro for Barone, which is pretty good. On Summon, I have to Crag in here because I can't, like, wait for him to do something and then use Wave because he could just negate Wave, uh, which I don't want. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try to force Barone negate, to which I can Chain Wave, and then my opponent will lose their Barone and take 1500. Uh, so we still have a spell and trap to get in an imperm, but all most importantly, all of our monsters are unaffected. So it's gonna be very hard for him to kill us through this. He's gonna activate the right. I think yes, I believe I choose to negate that with anemone, and I do. Our opponent is thinking. I'm gonna go ahead and decide to ritual summon. I believe they only play one trap. Yeah, so he's not gonna use the effect to get another trap. He's going to banish the light and dark, bring back chaos ruler. Uh, I say that's fine. Our opponent's going to go battle phase. So, again, we're guaranteeing our survival was one of the most important parts of this. And I think I actually imperm this thing because Liberal Mancer Doom Broker has another effect where uh, if he inflicts damage, I can he can target one of my monsters and shuffle into the deck. We definitely don't want that. So we're going to end up uh, imperming this thing. Makes sense to me. Uh, sucks that we had to do it that way, but we're in a good spot here because he either has to pop Kragan or destroy Anemone. And Anemone is a lot of follow-up, and he's going to decide to destroy Anemone, but that leaves Stealth Kragan on our board, which is huge. And Anemone is going to go ahead and add back some follow-up in the form of Marincess Dive, and then Snow is going to swing over Nibiru. Opponent is going to activate a, uh, what was this thing called again? First Appearance, add the Fire, and then probably pass his turn here unless he wants to make an extra deck play. Uh, he's gonna actually normal summon the fire. I guess he hadn't normal summon this turn. Make Lina, I guess special Nibiru. Link off with Nibiru. Um, make the, uh, Selene. Bring back Snow. Snow effect, try to book, to which, you know, it's unaffected by Marincess Wave. And he doesn't really realize that, so that's why we're doing this in chat. So, he's like, I I'm letting him know my monster's unaffected. He went, oh! And unfortunately, he found that out before making access code. I'm like pretty sure he was making an access code line here, which would have done nothing. So that did not be the case, which stinks because I believe would that have been game? It would have been extremely close to game if he went access code because Stealth Kraken could have just popped it next turn. We draw Ash, not the greatest draw. I'm going to go ahead and main phase target the Doom Broker to burn for 1250 and get him off the board. That was my target because I think I wanted to bait Snow when I attack Selene, but my opponent actually is going to do something interesting here, and not Snow the Kragan swinging over Selene, which I thought was weird because, like, that's a Link 3. You can do a lot with that. Um, however, we're going to go into our play here. Normal Summon Ash, which forces our opponent to think here. One of the big issues here is Kragan doesn't actually detach for his effect, so I can't activate Dive because there's no non-Link Marincesses in Grave. Uh, which is unfortunate. So I really summon this Ash to try and link with the Kragan just to put more monsters in Grave. Our opponent's going to banish 7 for Snow. He's going to book the Kragan, which sucks for me. Now I have an Ash and a Kragan uh, that is face down. He is going to have Dark Roll. He's going to activate his third first appearance. How do you even have targets for this? There's another Fire in deck. This is just ridiculous. Dagda effect to set the Scythe. This has been a crazy game one with a lot of back and forth, that's for sure. Uh, our opponent's going to link off into Hita, and he's going to link those off into Access Code. Access Code, effect, to gain attack, banish, to pop. We do not run the Kragan spawn, and we're going to take 4,300. Uh, I just feel like there should have been a way for game here, but I guess there's just not. Yeah, there's just not a way for game, uh, from what I'm seeing. He could have banished Snow for 1850, but there's just, yeah, there's just no other way. Uh, maybe if he was able to bring back Snow for another Link 3. I don't think my opponent was on Unicorn. I think that's the thing. If he had Unicorn in deck, then he could have banished 7 for Snow earlier, and then made Unicorn with the Hita, and then linked the Dagda and the Unicorn off to make a 53 access code. And then he might not have had enough for Snow again. I think he would have had enough for Snow. I'm not quite sure. I think he would have just been right there enough for Snow to banish an attack for game. So, I don't think our opponent plays Unicorn, and if he did, I think that was a slight misplay on his part. Gonna go ahead and triangle. This game is still going. This is a crazy game one. Our opponent is finally gonna scoop. That was a long game one for sure. But um, yeah, he wants to know if I drew a Marincess monster and I say yes and he's like, okay. Um, but yeah, we're going into game two here and I will be going second in game two. 
starting off, looking at the hands, I open Ash, Nib, Raigeki, Droplet, Dive. I said Droplet? That's not his name. Droplet. And Dive. So, four good go second cards, but no starter. We have a Marin says Dive, which is tough. Our opponent opens Sangan, Prep, Red Rose, Sangan, Fire. Sheesh! <laughs> his hand is very playable. He's going to add Illusion of Chaos, and I, I really... I'm very tempted to click fast forward here because his turn looks like it's going to be very long, and that's a lot of clicking for me. Uh, but we do have ways to stop him, which could be good. Uh, he's going to activate Liberal Mancer Fire, revealing Illusion of Chaos, Special Summon, Effect of Fire. Uh, like, one thing here is, like, my hand is good enough to where, at this point, I'm pretty sure if I top deck a Marincess monster, I'll be able to, like, clear the board and then... Uh, play afterwards, so I, I don't think I'm out of this game just yet, but I need to top deck good. Our opponent takes the souls and the red rose to make arc light, which is insane. Uh, essentially, I'm forced to ash this red rose here just to try and bait out this uh, arc light so that my nib will be live later, and I have to get rid of this arc light either way because I have a droplet. Uh, also, really cool is Ash gets banished here because of arc light, so he can't call by the grave this if he had it. It's pretty nifty. Uh, he is going to arc light and negate the Ash Blossom, so Red Rose is going to resolve, and then Rocks 1, Herald 2. When when Herald can add Rituals, it's so broken, because there's just so much free advantage off of negate, it is actually disgusting. Going to go ahead and make Shooting Riser to dump Snow, my arch enemy, uh, which essentially this Droplet is going to have to be for. So I'm going to have to Droplet, or Raigeki is bored and hope it goes through, and then Droplet the Snow at this point. Unless I draw Blue Tang, then there's like differences. Uh, Geek Boy was going to go add first appearance. He's going to make Cherubini because Shooting Riser dumps snow, so it's level 3. Uh, and at this point, I should have nibbed on this Cherubini summon. I just wasn't, like, thinking about it at the time. I was like, alright, this nib has to get there. It's got to make a play. And then he made Cherubini, and I didn't nib on summon, so now he has Water Enchantress. And we are, uh -huh, scamazed here. We are, we are in a terrible spot after that, essentially, because... The Brave Engine is so much free advantage that it's going to be really hard to come back through this with all these Ghost Second cards. Uh, and like, yeah, also we have to top deck a Marin set. So first appearance, add Agent. Uh, Effect Fateful, add Griffin. Wow, this fast forward button is actually so good. Uh, dump Sangin. I'm going to choose to Nib when he reveals the Griffin. Um, and he's like, yeah, that's fine. So Nib token, and then he specials Griffin. And then going to go ahead and on that summon, add the Draco back. So, like, he doesn't have a negate with Griffin, but this nib could have been so much better. Because now he just has all of this. He has a level 7 extender, which he shouldn't have because I should have just nibbed the Cherubini. So, again, game 1 and 2, my Nibirus were just huge misplays. I think I could have Nibiru at so much better points this game. And I feel like my Nibirus were really bad, which made these games much harder. Uh, he's going to go ahead and Doom Broker, fair enough. Uh, going to go ahead and actually the effect... He just has so much here. I have a Raigeki and a Droplet, which is very good at clearing a board. So again, we still just need to top deck good and be able to play around Snow. Uh, so our opponent is going to Synchro off, or I guess he's not. Deciding not to. Uh, he's going to choose to Ritual Summon with the Illusion of Chaos and then Doom Broker first. wonder why you go for this first instead of just Synchroing with the Griffin Rider. Anyways, Papega Ruler there. I don't know why he switched it up. Maybe he just wanted to. Uh, mill 5, and he mills an Illusion of Chaos, uh, nothing else really. His Chaos Ruler mills haven't been great, but uh, they've definitely done enough. I mean, at this point, look at my opponent's board and look at mine, and we draw Blue Tang! It was worth sitting through 8 minutes of combo so that we could finally draw a starter. Yes. Um, so we have Raigeki Droplet, which is great. So draw phase, we're going to Droplet, pitching the nib to hit the Halki Fibrax. And we're essentially doing this... And I send a monster here. I was never sending a trap because I want to bait this intervention because it means Raigeki is going to blast this field. So I send a monster knowing he sort of needs to intervention this, to which our opponent does. So successfully baited. Opponent's going to go ahead and set the scythe, add that back to hand. And my first action in the main phase after his effects resolve and he gets plus seven for no reason uh, is he's gonna try to activate Hauk, and to which I tell him, hey, yo, we're in, we're in draw phase, that's not how cards work. Uh, and our opponent's like, yeah. So, 
we're going to first action in main phase right get the board because there's really nothing he can do about this like yeah he can activate how and special wonder magician to get a draw because his board goes away but we're not getting scythed which is the whole point uh, i'm gonna summon blue tang and he says that's good and i'm gonna dump that to which he snows we always knew he was activating snow here which is why we dumped seahorse because it can sort of make a play uh and then we can try to keep playing through this 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 was a really good match and it's a really long match because of that a lot of back and forth like at this point in the game uh we were playing for 48 minutes already so yeah we this was a, a long one for sure uh, i'm gonna go ahead and link off into the blue slug add back seahorse special seahorse link for sea angel sea angel add battle ocean we've already used dive so no adding that make splash mage because we're going for one card combo make anemone bring back splash mage make argonaut anemone add back dive equip and then swing over snow uh and we have you know an argonaut spell a trap negate our opponent messed up his draw so or he, he tried to declare it and then put it on, on the bottom of deck for some reason you know accidental misclick it happens uh but look at our opponent's hand look at what we have we have a spell and trap negate with like good follow-up but I think the writing's on the wall here. I think there's just no way a spell and trap negate wins us the game. So I think I am about to scoop. Yes. So going on into game three. And at this point, it's been a long duel. So I, I kind of wanted to win this game because we've been here a minute. So I am going to take first. Opening hands. We're going to see Mistaken Arrest, Monster Reborn, Spring Girl, Ghost Ogre, Marincess Wave. So it's a decent hand. One card starter with an extender. And we have a Floodgate going first. Uh, first appearance, Nibiru, Jet, Ash, Arborea. <sighs> we have to play through Nib, Ash in game three. Always a pleasure, always a pleasure. Uh, luckily we do have Reborn, which is a good out to, um, what am I trying to say? Nibiru. So we're gonna go Sea Angel, affect Sea Angel, Chainlink. What? Okay. I tell him to wait. Our opponent auto Ash blossomed, which was tough. And really, my fault for not going in chat and saying Angel 1, Spring Girl 2, uh, I just declared Angel and I was going to click my graveyard and declare Spring Girl the really lazy way. Do not do that. Lesson for everyone. Don't do it like that. Definitely declare in chat when you are setting up chain links because essentially my opponent ashed when I am chain blocking with Spring Girl. So to go over what's happening in chat, essentially, I was like, wait, uh, because I was like, I need to change. And I was like, ah, I should have declared it in chat. So I'll just let it be Ash. And he was like, uh, and, and he, uh, I tell him that I was going to chain, Spring Girl is chain link too. And he's like, do you want me to go back? And I was like, no, nah, we're fine. But our opponent is like, I, I trust you. You were probably always going to do that. Like he says, knowing if you were blind into a hand, you'd do it. So our opponent is super cool here. So props for him being a cool guy or girl. Uh, and he allows us to chain block, which is what we wanted to do. And we actually know a seahorse, which is insane. So we're going to chain link one, see angel, chain link two, Spring Girl, add the dive. Marincess Dive, to which our opponent tries to Ash, but if you select the effect too special from Graveyard, your opponent cannot Ash this card. That'd be like trying to Ash a Triple Tactics talent that is trying to take a monster your opponent controls. That's not how it works. Um, so yeah, he can't Ash this. So I feel really bad at this point that our opponent's Ash is known, and he doesn't really have a great spot to use it. It feels kind of bad, but we're going to go ahead and Dive for Spring Girl. Link those off into Anemone. Anemone effect, bring back the Seahorse. Uh, he, he thought you could Ash Dive, and he was like, no, you can't. And I was like, correct, you cannot. Uh, Effective Anemone, bring back the Seahorse, which was luckily mowed off Spring Girl. My Spring Girl mills, by the way, recently have been insane. Like, there have been times where I only open Spring Girl, and then I mill Blue Tang, and I'm like, I'm too good. This is insane. Um, uh, gonna go ahead and turn Seahorse into Blue Slug. Bring back the Seahorse. Just super fantastic we milled the Seahorse. It made our hand so much better than it was gonna be. Make Coral Triangle, Anemone Effect to add back, and we are going to add back the Spring, or Target Dive. I say Target Wave. That's not how that works. And obviously we already have Wave in hand, but we're making Triangle because she's insane follow-up. Like, even if you think you can add back, like, a Spring Girl by making the Marbled Rock instead, it is so much better to make Triangle just in case your board gets broken. Uh, we're going to make the Bubble Reef here set the mistaken arrest and we're going to try to go end phase and our opponent goes ahead and asks what he knows in hand i reveal the dive and our opponent is going to nibiru and i'm like that's fine 
Monster Reborn. <laughs> and this is what I love about Reborn in the Marincess deck is it's a really great out to Nibiru. Uh, so I go back into end phase, which is fine. Uh, our opponent draws Libromancer Fire. So his hand is weird. He has Jet. He has Arborea. He's got like the cards you don't necessarily want to draw, but they still work. I'm going to banish the Blue Slug for Bubble Reef to which our opponent Ashes, which again, fair. Like he didn't really have a time to use that um due to our little mishap there but yeah this has been a really good game so far so let's see if that continues our opponent activates first appearance to which we actually mistake an arrest and luckily or not luckily but because our opponent opened up like the generic good like bricks he's able to play without like, searching his deck like sangin wouldn't be good here but arborea is like actually okay because it's a tuner but he also has jet so essentially him having a tuner here is really good for him because or he's actually gonna make almirage instead of yeah, so actually, you know, opening the bricks comes up for a play like this, even through Mistaken Arrest, which I find to be hilarious. Our opponent's going to make Halky Fibrax, and then he is going to... Spe or I'm going to Ogre the Halk. Makes a lot of sense to me. There's not much better place to Ogre. Uh, he's going to read the Bubble Reef. He's going to Special Summon the Ash Blossom. He's going to link those off for Lina. Oh, and our opponent actually just scoops. Scooped really early that game. I feel like there's more plays you can make. Uh, but he had his own play, and he's going to say it here. So we do win that game. Marincess does take the game finally after what must have been over an hour. 65 minutes. That was a struggle. But, yeah, I was like, where's the mistake? So our opponent's going to explain it here. He's saying when he had Nib, Ash there, he should bring back Jet. Uh, take the Jet and the Nib and make Lina. Lina effect bring back ogre yeah and then he can turn those into cherubini now unfortunate for him we do have the marincess wave hard drawn we didn't need to search it so his plans were going to be stopped like wave on Lina would have stopped that entirely if i wanted to go that route but there's a chance i don't wave the Lina, and then he's able to actually play here so who knows good game all around whoo that was a long one <laughs> I need to drink of water after this, but hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, uh, you know, leave down below what you thought of the game, any misplays you might have seen. My Nibiru's were definitely not as good as they should have been, but yeah, this has been Aaron from Top Gaming. Bye, YouTube.